Encouragement that there is life after tragedy. Don't change the channel. My guests are here for you today. Patrick and Melody Sholigan have come from Rochester, Alberta. And I want to say you two have proven to be rough riders. And we're smiling because we know that your son Keith is a Saskatchewan rough rider. Yes. <laughs> Part of the good, good news in a family that has had more than an imaginable share of trials. Um, Pat, I want to take you back to January 24th, 1984, in your office, preparing to take your life. What was going on? Well, we uh, were in a point of financial collapse at that time in the, when we, we owned a, a fledgling feedlot in Lethbridge. And uh, certainly I was not a Christian yet, and, and Melody and I had just had Tara. And uh, That's your second child? Our second child. And I had been, uh, like every good Ukrainian boy, I went out and got good and drunk. <laughs> and uh, to the point where I couldn't remember someone called me that evening and I couldn't remember that they uh, had called and I didn't do that very often but it was kind of a celebration so that was what I had done and I had gone into the hospital that late the next evening and uh, hung over of course and very short of sleep and our marriage was not very good at that point uh, I had been contemplating suicide for probably I'm going to say eight months, nine months prior and uh, because I felt that was the only way to get away from the problems I had and you know I felt that uh, I knew that my insurance policies were intact that if I if I committed suicide Melody would have enough money to raise the children, the farm would be out of debt and they would have life you know ha live happily ever after and we had an incredible fight that night and uh, Melody told me that she didn't want me in her life anymore. And wow. uh, just had a new baby. Yeah, but I was uh, like a new rattlesnake. <laughs> and uh, when I was like that, I was not a very nice person in those days. And I'm sure there's days that Melody still doesn't think I'm a very nice person. He's a nice person now. <laughs> but uh, uh, I went home and, you know, very vindictive and, and, um, but with a very sense of great hopelessness and despair. And I was going to, I had the gun in my office. I was, I was weeping. Very difficult to describe what I went through, but uh, for some reason, I had been raised in a religious type family and never been taught anything of the Bible, but we went to church and I called out to Jesus. I said, Jesus, I know you're out there. And, um, it wasn't like any uh, bells went off or banners started to wave, but uh, when I made this confession, um, there was a peace came into my office and the thought of suicide left me immediately. Now, I had, like I say, I had contemplated this for a long time. Uh, I had a sister who had taken her own life uh, uh, probably about four years earlier than that, six years earlier than that. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, so this, and I had uh, several cousins that had taken their lives, so there was a real curse Dear. in our family. Ooh. And, uh, but that night, something happened in my office. The power in that name. Yes. Jesus. Absolutely. And uh, God changed me. That certainly was foundational yeah. for the road ahead to have Jesus in your life. 1995, just about a decade later, uh, you had a multi-million dollar, dollar cattle operation yes. going into receivership. Um, September of 95, we were out looking at uh, purebred cattle in southern Saskatchewan and Weyburn, and I had been studying the book of Job, and uh, the Lord mm -hmm. spoke to me, and he said, I'm going to put you through a Job experience. Wow. And you, you heard God say that. Absolutely. And uh, being a, a full-blown charismatic, I thought, praise God, this will just be another badge for my faith chest and something that will add to my testimony because I'd been all over the world testifying 
about the greatness and goodness You've of God. Got involved in missions? Yes. I don't know how many countries, Japan and uh, lots. <laughs> the Baltic states, Ukraine, Russia. Yeah. Uh, so your life took a, a whole new direction. Mm -hmm. And so you weren't scared with this subtle warning that things were going to become difficult. Uh, if, if I had known the difficulties, yes, I would have been very scared. <laughs> Uh, because my faith at that time was weak, if I look back. And what about uh, you, Melody? Are you on board with this new road? She new didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice with Patrick. Um, he used to pray, God baptize me with the fire, and I used to step aside and say, oh boy, here we go again. <laughs> oh, oh. No, him, Lord, yeah. him. <laughs> or, or maybe not. Yeah, okay. You just deal with it. Yeah. Mm. But you too came to faith in Christ? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I had uh, accepted Jesus when I was a child in grade five. Um, I didn't know exactly when it was, but I knew I, knew I had accepted Jesus. And uh, one day I found a, a Bible that when I was in grade five, the, uh, Gideon's Bible. the, the Gideon's Bible had been given to us. And did you sign the and day? And I had signed the when date. When you prayed to yes. ask Jesus into mm -hmm. your life? And so it was nice just to have a confirmation. I have a real date. Ah. <laughs> so, and I'd been attending a Bible study down our country road, yeah. and praying for Patrick. So, oh, before yeah. yes, before January twenty fourth, nineteen eighty four. Yes, in an office with a gun. Yeah. That's right. Oh, I love this. God's weaving. Well, you're talking about this. Uh, cattle operation going into receivership and and uh, the promise of trouble you made an interesting comment I don't know if it was just to yourself or to the Lord well at least my children yeah. haven't been hit well God took everything from us we went through a total stripping uh, to the place where we didn't know where we were going to live you know we'd been multimillionaires, helped other people with rent, and done many wonderful things that God had enabled, uh, enabled us to do. Mm -hmm. And then we came to the point where we had to totally trust God. And uh, I had often made the quip, well, God has stripped me totally financially, but he hasn't touched my children. Which, of course, was Job's experience. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then September 29, 2001, us what happened. Well, um, my daughter had a volleyball tournament in Westlock, a half an hour drive from our place. And so the team all came and camped out in our living room and all over the floors. We had mattresses everywhere. It was a fun time. And uh, we were going to go to the volleyball tournament. The volleyball team left early. And Mark was going to go and take his two sisters into St. Albert. They were going to meet some friends at the farmer's market. And then he was going to take them to the show. Mark is your eldest son. Yes. yes, as a treat. And uh, they had the girls that said, come on, Dad, come to the farmer's market with us. And Dad said, no, I think we're going to go see Tara's volleyball game. So my son Keith and Patrick and I uh, made plans to do that. And so we all kind of went in three different, you know, at three different times. And um, when it was our turn to leave, we, the fog was absolutely horrible. And uh, we got onto the highway. And when we got to the corner, no, a little past the corner, there was a truck that was flagging us down and telling us that there had been an accident ahead and that we needed to reroute. And at that time, Patrick started immediately phoning Mark and there was no answer. And uh, Pat asked uh, what kind of a vehicle it was that was involved. And this fellow described a vehicle which was not our vehicle. And that kind of, okay. And yet inside, mm. there was something inside that we knew and we ended up going to the volleyball game. And quite a few hours later, the RCMP showed up. And as soon as you we saw, saw the him, uniforms. Yes. 
we knew it was us out of all of the crowd that we'd, we would be called out. It, it's just something we knew.